the making of a fighter pilot i think starts uh, very early in one's uh, life to begin with uh, the individual must have that fire in his belly the will to excel and the spirit of adventure running in his blood if he has these qualities i think uh, things will happen in due course of time all that's required is for him to undergo a pilot's aptitude battery test wherein his psychomotor skills are tested and if he's found suitable he's put through a personality test and uh, also a whole range of other tests which takes about a week or so at the services selection board once he clears all these hurdles he goes in for a very very detailed and intrinsic medical examination wherein all his body parameters are checked there are a whole range of x-rays which are taken and uh, to my mind this is one of the biggest hurdles because uh, even the smallest uh, deformity in the spine can render a cadet or a candidate unfit for uh, military aviation once he's through with his medical he goes on to join the nda or the air force academy and thereafter it's an uphill task all the way nevertheless very challenging extremely rewarding and satisfying it begins with uh, basic flying training at one of our academies wherein the first milestone is the solo flight wherein the cadet flies for the very first time without an instructor that i think is one of the most exciting times in a pilot's career thereafter he goes on to get commissioned and earn his much coveted wings which every pilot wears very proudly on his left breast he then goes on to fly the advanced trainers followed by supersonic high performance jets and then uh, he attains yet another milestone called uh, fully operational status wherein uh, he is adjudged fit enough to undertake an operational mission if upon call, if called upon to do so at any time in his career Uh, thereafter there are various courses in the air force you become a flight instructor after a 6 month course at tambaram there uh, you become a fighter combat re- leader that's similar to what uh, tom cruise was in top gun and uh, a few fighter pilots do become test pilots like i did after undergoing a very very rigorous course at uh, bangalore here for about a year or so and all said and done an extremely challenging career extremely rewarding and very very satisfying My tryst with aviation started way back in I think uh, 1970 when I was in the in class 5 my father had a transferable job and we moved from Bangalore to Hyderabad and uh, very very providentially we got a house which lay slap bang on the approach path for runway 27 at the Begum Pet airport and I would be mesmerized by the aircraft taking off and landing I would spend long hours sitting out in our garden watching aircraft and uh, very soon as a young kid i could identify every single aircraft that came and landed or took off at begum pit and uh, once in a while i'd be rewarded by the sight of a canberra or a vampire that would come in and land and do a touch and go and that would make my day and then what actually inspired me to become a become a military aviator was that uh, our house op- also happened to be very close to hakim pit or very close to the local flying area at hakim pit and i would see these vampires come up overhead and do all the aerobatic maneuvers and i think since then i've uh, never ever thought of any other career except a career in military aviation i would spend long hours uh, poring through the observers book of aircraft learning everything about any aircraft that happened to be in that book and uh, i i think i can say very proudly that as a 10 year old boy i could identify every single aircraft in that observers book from there on uh, there was no looking back for me I worked uh, towards NDA and nothing else. My parents would want me to study for IIT or anything uh, different but then I didn't budge from what I had in mind and luckily I got through the NDA and thereafter there was no looking back. In so far as uh, my advice to youngsters who wish to join the military uh, as an as a navy aviator is concerned what I'd like to say is yes uh, probably the pay packet isn't as uh, rewarding as what you would get uh, in the corporate world or in civil aviation but then i think there are things that more than compensate for what you lose from the monetary side um, i can guarantee you that they can be nothing more exciting than a career in the air force not only as a fighter pilot but also as a transport pilot or as a or as a helicopter pilot the kind of flying you do the kind of areas that you go and um, serve in from literally from the eastern edge to the western edge and from kashmir down to kanyakumari you get to meet a lot of very interesting people you develop very strong bonds and uh, all said and done it's i think one of the most satisfying careers that any youngster could aspire for today i would very very strongly recommend that any youngster who has that spirit in him must never look back and just press on
Uh, this was a flight that uh, we were doing from Pune to Delhi. Having taken off from Bangalore, we landed at Pune. And while the aircraft was turning around and passengers were deplaning and boarding, uh, we do the customary walk around check, wherein uh, you just walk around the aircraft, check that there are no fuel leaks, oil leaks, missing dents, so on and so forth. While I was performing this walk around, I saw this individual being brought in on a wheelchair, minus both legs and minus, uh, minus one arm from the elbow downwards. I immediately uh, realized that this must be a war hero. So I took the time off, walked up to him, he was with his family and I asked him, what happened to you? And he told me that he was uh, in the Kargil war and he lost his legs and his arm in a, during the Kargil war in operations, which is when I uh, saluted him. Although he was uh, a Nayak, I thought he's a war hero and I must salute him. And then I walked into the cockpit, told my first officer, you take your time and prepare the FMGS for the next flight. I'm going to talk to the passengers and announce the presence of this war hero. So I took my time, told the passengers who was on board, and it was indeed so encouraging to see all passengers applauding and they actually stood up and applauded this war hero. I think it was a wonderful moment for him and for me as well and uh, it uh, uh, reposed my faith in the nation who held this individual in such high regard and I think uh, I'd do that anytime if I saw a war hero again and uh, like I told all my colleagues who are from the armed forces who are now in civil aviation that any one of them would have done the same thing that I did if at all they had realized that they had this individual on board. For a fighter pilot, every single sortie that he flies is a challenge uh, because uh, he's always uh, trying to excel in what he's doing and uh, the yardstick actually is himself. How has he performed in the previous sortie and how he'd like to improve upon what he's going to do in the next sortie. Having said that, um, yes, as a young uh, trainee, every single individual does come across certain challenges. For instance, um, uh, when I graduated from the HT2, which was a tail dragger propeller aircraft manufactured by HAL, which incidentally was one of the most difficult aircraft to fly because she would wear off the runway at, uh, at uh, drop of a hat. I went on to the Kiran, which had uh, better performance capabilities. And uh, in the initial stages, uh, I was blacking out during aerobatic maneuvers. I had a wonderful instructor, now Air Marshal S.P. Singh, who helped me out of it and uh, told me exactly how to resist that, uh, the tendency to black out, wherein the blood pools to the lower extremities of the body, depriving the brain of uh, blood supply, leading to what is colloquially called a blackout. And uh, once I'd learned that technique, I don't think I ever blacked out in my fighter flying career, not even in a MiG-29 at 9Gs. And um, thereafter, there's a common perception amongst most individuals that once you join the military, uh, you don't have to study. So I was one of those who believed in that and I tended to disregard my studies, particularly at the NDA. And uh, you do get a BSc degree from the NDA. And uh, if you don't uh, perform satisfactorily academically, you tend to lose a term or worse still, you could even get uh, discharged from the academy. We had a couple of divisional officers in the NDA who took it upon themselves to motivate us and to tell us that uh, you're now going to be an officer and academics is equally important, equally important to any, anything else that you do outdoors. And that's when I realized that I need to pull my socks up and study harder. And I managed to graduate without uh, getting relegated or uh, thrown out in the worst case. And uh, for those uh, youngsters who wish to join the Air Force or the military as a career, it is hard, it is a lot of hard work, but uh, the rewards are equally, uh, should I say, significant and very, very satisfying. So uh, don't get discouraged by what you hear outside. Just join, wear the uniform and see what it has to offer. And I can tell you that you'll never be disappointed.